Okay, so we're kicking off with some um, acid stuff now. Uh, butanoic acid, uh, right, so Tommy K, why an expression for the dissociation constant of butanoic acid? So we know that Ka is H plus over the, with the um, deprotonated acid there over the concentration of the acid, like so. Calculate the pKa of butanoic acid. Well, pKa is equal to minus log to the base 10 of Ka. If you do that, oh, log to the base 10 Ka, Ka 1.51 times 10 to the minus 5. If you do that in your calculator, you should get it to be 4.82. Well worth checking, you can do that in your calculator. Okay, so it's now asking me to calculate um, the pH. To calculate the pH of butyric acid, I obviously need to find that uh, H plus concentration. Remember, we can simplify this. We assume that that is equal to that. So it's just the concentration of H plus squared. Um, is equal to Ka. Ka, uh, they told me, is 1.51 times 10 to the minus 5. Um, they've also told me the concentration of the acid up here. So let's replace that with 0.250. Um, you then will end up as H plus, concentration of H plus squared, equaling 3.775 times 10 to the minus 6. You square root that concentration of H plus is 1.94 times 10 to the minus 3. You then bung it in your pH. pH is equal to minus log to the base 10 of that number. And you should end up as being 2.71. Uh, notice they've asked for it to two decimal places, which I've done. Uh, right, so for the next set, they want some ionic equations. These are actually quite straightforward. You don't need to worry about it being butanoic acid. It's the same for any acid. Um, so magnesium plus 2H plus goes to magnesium 2 plus plus hydrogen gas. Um, the ionic equation for the reaction between butanoic acid and sodium carbonate is just going to be the reaction between hydrogen ions and carbonate ions to give you carbon dioxide and water. So those guys you really should know. Right, okay, so uh, next one. A student adds 50 centimetres cubed of uh, butanoic acid to sodium hydroxide a buffer solution formed. Why does a buffer solution form? Well, okay, um, you can do the equation if you like. You've got butanoic acid. is going to react with sodium hydroxide to give you sodium butanoate plus water. So you form the salt of a weak acid. Why does a buffer solution form? Well, if you work out, the moles of that, you've actually got 0 0.0125 moles of that. And moles of that, you've actually got 0 0.025 moles of that. So you've got butanoic acid, butanoic acid in excess. So you've still got some of this butanoic acid um, remaining, as well as the sodium butanoate that you've formed. And um, then we've got a weak acid and a subtle weak acid, which means that you have a buffer solution. Okay, so they now want me to work out the pH of this buffer solution. If we go back to the last question, we've worked out we've added. 0.0025 moles of sodium hydroxide. Therefore, that is equal to the moles of sodium butanoate that I must have formed there. So how many moles of butanoic acid have I got? Well, I added 0.0125 moles. I've used, in reacting with the um, sodium hydroxide, 0.0025. So I've actually got left 0.1 moles. I now need to work out my concentrations. So concentrations of sodium butanoate is equal to the number of moles 
divided by the volume it's in. What volume is it in? Well, the volume of my buffer, I've got 50 of that and 50 of that, and therefore it's 100 times 1,000. So that is going to be 0 0.025 moles per decimeter cubed. Concentration of butanoic acid is going to equal the moles that I've got divided by 100 times by 1,000, which is 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. So, those are the moles that I've got. Then all I need to do is plumb that into my Ka expression. Ka, I know, is H plus over the uh, concentration of the um, salt uh, and the concentration of the acid. So, Ka, they told me, has been 1.51 times 10 to the minus 5. Concentration of A plus, I don't know. Concentration of A minus, I do know, has been 0.025. Concentration of acid, I know, that's 0.1. If I rearrange that equation, I get concentration of A plus to be 6 times 10 to the minus 4, sorry, 6.04 times 10 to the minus 5. And if you bung that into your pH, so you log that and change the sign, you should get the pH to be 4.22. Right, so it's time to complete um, this equation now. Now I've got two acids, so I have to work out what's the strongest one um, between methanoic acid and butanoic acid. Well, they give me the Ka's, and hopefully you can see that methanoic acid is a stronger acid. It's got the highest Ka. So he is going to act as acid 1, which makes him base base 2. So if he's acid, he is going to lose that hydrogen, and that hydrogen is going to go on to my butanoic acid to give me COOH2+. Plus. That therefore is going to be base 1, and that one is going to be acid 2, because these differ by H+, plus, as do these differ by H+, plus, and therefore they are linked together. Okay, so we're now on to some uh, rates questions. Um, so, uh, nitrogen dioxide reacting with ozone. Um, kinetics have been investigated, and it wants me to determine the rate equation and the rate constant for this reaction. Um, so, uh, best way to tackle this, let's tackle it with uh, experiment 1 and 2. Hopefully you can see ozone concentration stays the same. If in your calculus you do 0 0.00225 divided by 0 0.0015, you will find that that comes to, you have times it by 1.5. If you do the same here, that has also increased by 1.5. Therefore, it's first order with respect to NO2. And you can explain that from experiments one and two when the concentration of nitrogen um, dioxide is times by 1.5, the rate is times by 1.5, therefore it's first order. Now from experiments two and three, nitrogen dioxide stays the same, but you can see that I have times the concentration of ozone by two, and I've also times the rate by two. So again, when you come to answer this, you can say experiments two and three show me concentration of NO2 stays the same, ozone times by two, rate times by two, and therefore first order with respect to um, ozone as well. So that was the easy bit. Now I have to do a little bit of uh, maths. So I know now that my rate equation is equal to K times the concentration of NO2 times the concentration of ozone. Let's try that again. Okay, so I now need to put in the numbers for the rate and these two concentrations, and I'm going to use experiment one. So that number's going to go there, that number there, that number there, 
You don't have to use the fun one, up to you. Um, so, if I do that, it's 4.80 times 10 to the minus 8 is equal to k times 0 0.0015 times 0 0.0025. If you rearrange that, you should make k is equal to 0 0.018. Units, well, let's have a look. We're going to end up with that. Remember, the rate is in moles per decimeter cubed per second. This is going to be in moles per decimeter cubed times moles per decimeter cubed when I rearrange these two. That cancels with that. So the units are going to be moles to the minus one decimeters cubed second to the minus one. So it's great. Uh, question goes. That wasn't half bad, to be honest. Um, right, and then suggest a possible mechanism. Right, you've got to, the key thing to get the marks. You've got to put the two species that you're in your rate equation. I need one NO2. Why? Well, because it's first order. One ozone. Again, only one because it's first order. Uh, and then you've kind of good idea to try and make one of your products. Um, one of my products in the overall equation is oxygen. Luckily, it's joking as well. So I'm going to make oxygen as one of my products, and if one of that, that's going to give me NO3. NO3 doesn't appear here, so let's get rid of that boy. I need to get another NO2 used, so that could form my product. Um, and actually, that works out quite nicely, doesn't it? And those two together would give me the overall equation, like so. Alright, let's move on to B. Why does this, looking at the feasibility now, is giving me delta H and delta S. Delta H is the enthalpy, delta S is the entropy, which tells me this order. Why does this have a negative entropy value? Well, if you do a little bit of accounting, that's got three moles of gas, but that's only got two moles of gas, and therefore the number of gases moles is decreasing, which means there's a decrease in the disorder of the system. What well, I now need to calculate delta G. Delta G, this equation you need uh, to know. Delta G is delta H minus T delta S. Delta G is what they want me to work out. It's at 25 degrees. Obviously, as a chemist, you never use 25 degrees. Automatically, in your mind, you're thinking 298 Kelvin. That equals delta H, which you can work out, minus T, 298 times delta S. Oh, but what do you need to remember to do? Delta S is in joules per Kelvin per mole. You've got to convert it into kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. So you need to divide that by 1,000, which gives me minus 0.168. If you do that, you end up it being minus 198 plus 50.064. Remember, a minus and a minus gives me a plus. Um, so that comes to minus 148. Whenever you have to talk about uh, these feasibilities, I would always stick in the equation just to remind yourselves. So delta G must be less or equal to zero. Delta H for this reaction is negative, and delta S for this reaction is negative. So that overall expression is going to be a positive value, because it's a negative times a negative. Therefore, as temperature increases, the minus T delta S becomes more positive and delta G becomes more positive and therefore the reaction is less feasible as you increase temperature.